Audio Jungle. The U.S. Army says it wants to start developing a replacement for the venerable Stinger short-range surface-to-air missile and actually begins testing at least one prototype design by the end of fiscal year 2023. The goal is to put the final weapon into production by fiscal year 2027 at the latest. Because the service has determined existing Stingers are becoming increasingly obsolete and because the stockpile of these weapons is shrinking, in part due to transfers to the Ukrainian military to support their ongoing operations against Russian forces. The Army Project Manager for Short and Medium Effectors for Layered Defense, SHIELD, issued a formal request for information, RFI, regarding the proposed replacement of the Stinger on March 28, 2022. The replacement effort is officially known as the Short Range Air Defense MSHORAD, Increment Maneuver 3. The MSHORAD Increment 1 is a mobile short-range air defense system based on the Stryker 8x8 wheeled armored vehicle armed with the Stinger, as well as the Longbow Hellfire missile guided by millimeter wave radar and 30mm automatic cannon. Dot. The Increment 2, also known as the Directed Energy Maneuver Short Range Air Defense the MSHORAD, system, will be a striker-based design equipped with a directed energy weapon. The Army is already evaluating designs equipped with 50-kilowatt-class lasers, but the service is still potentially considering alternatives, such as one proposed type with high-power microwave weapons. According to the March contract announcement, Increment 3 is focused solely on developing a new missile to replace the Stinger, rather than a complete new vehicle. Details on what the Army is actually looking for in the new missile have, so far, been relatively limited, but the notice provides some useful details. The system must be capable of defeating Rotary Wing, RW, Group 2-3 Unmanned Aircraft Systems, UAS, and Fixed Wing, FW, Ground Attack Aircraft with capabilities equal to or greater than current Stinger missiles, with proximity fuse. Ability, he said, the system should provide better target gain with increased mortality and range over current capabilities. The U.S. military defines Group 2 drones as those that have a maximum weight of between 21 and 55 pounds, an operational ceiling of no more than 3,500 feet, and that fly at a speed of 250 knots or less. The Type 3 group also cannot fly faster than 250 knots, but can have a maximum weight of up to 1,320 pounds and is capable of reaching altitudes of up to 18,000 feet. The system must be capable of integrating with the Stinger Vehicle Universal Launcher SVUL. The contract announcement added, the system should be an all-up round, AWR portable army. The SVUL is a four-round launcher used on MSHORAD Increment 1 vehicles and Avenger systems, which can be mounted on a Humvee 4x4 or in a static position. This all strongly suggests that the Army wants each new missile to be readily compatible with its existing vehicle-based Stinger launch architecture, as well as human portable launch units. The Stinger reprogrammable RMP, microprocessor will become obsolete in fiscal year FY 2023 and the Stinger Block I is undergoing a life extension to extend its life, the notice said as part of an explanation of why the missile is new. Needed now, the Stinger's inventory is currently in decline. The origins of the Stinger go back to 1967 with the Army's requirement for a successor to the FIM-43 Red Eye, the first shoulder-fired surface-to-air missile system, also known as the Human Portable Air Defense System Manpads. Active development of what was originally known as the Red Eye 2 and the redesigned FIM-92A began in 1971.
The various problems encountered in development meant that the Army awarded only the first contract for mass production of what had been renamed the Stinger to General Dynamics in 1978. The service began fielding the weapon in 1981. The Stinger, of course, famously saw the first combat use in hand. Insurgents in Afghanistan, who used it to exert great influence over the country's Soviet troops in the 1980s. In 1983, production of the FIM-92B, with an improved seeker, began. The following year, development began on the first Stinger RMP variant, the FIM-92C, which, true to its name, included a reprogrammable microprocessor designed for easy integration of forward software upgrades. General Dynamics stopped making the FIM-92A and B missiles in 1987 when it shifted its entire production line to the much improved FIM-92C. Improved FIM-92D variant designed in 1983, production of the FIM-92B, with an improved seeker, began. The following year, development started on the first Stinger RMP variant, the FIM-92C, which, as its name implies, included a reprogrammable microprocessor designed to make it easier to integrate software improvements going forward. General Dynamics stopped making FIM-92A and B missiles in 1987 when it shifted its entire production line to the much improved FIM-92C. An upgraded FIM-92D variant designed to better resist enemy countermeasures was subsequently developed. In 1992, General Dynamics received a contract to develop an improved RMP variant, known as the RMP Block I or FIM-92E. Shortly thereafter, General Dynamics sold its missile division to the Hughes Company, which then finished work on the new Stinger version. The Army received its first FIM-92E missiles, which featured seekers and updated software that reportedly gave them improved capabilities against targets with smaller infrared signatures, in 1995. 